Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, continuation of the Isaiah series. We're getting ready to close this out. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I did a Bible study on why God hated, hated Esau. It's in, uh, let's see, God hated Esau is in Malachi chapter 1. Read it. I mean, you know, those are God's words, not mine. Uh, and that's reconfirmed I believe, by Paul, I believe, in the book of Romans. I'm not sure. Of course, there are some people with dark skin that say that white people are Esau. I don't believe it, but hey, what can I tell you? Now, I did an entire Bible study on why God hated Esau. The link is in the description and in the comments, you can take a look. Uh, one of the big things was is Esau married into the satanic seed line of Genesis 6, the Canaanites. And if you don't have a clue what I'm talking about, I got a playlist on the angels that sinned. You know, the thing is, is when you really get into the Bible and study it, Things make sense. So let's take a look. Before we read chapter uh, 63 and verse 1, let's take a look. I want to confirm something. Esau is Edom. Genesis 36, verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Genesis 36, 1. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Genesis 36, 19. These are the sons of Esau, who is Edom, and the, uh, these are their dukes. Now Esau was Jacob's uh, brother. So, Obadiah 1, 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a flame, and the house of Joseph, I'm sorry, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. What stubble? Something you burn. And they shall kindle in them. You ever heard of kindling a fire? And the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Now, Amalek was a grandson of Esau. Now remember, Esau married two Hittite women, which were of the Canaanite tribes, satanic seed line. He also married one of Ishmael's daughters, at least one. And I wonder if those are the descendants of the royal family of Saudi Arabia. I don't know. Wouldn't surprise me. That would be my guess. You know, my somewhat educated guess. I don't know. Exodus 17, verse 16. For he said, because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek. War with Amalek. The Lord has sworn the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Does that mean, oh, until Christ comes back and then he's going to change his mind and offer him salvation? Uh, I don't think so. Deuteronomy 25, 19. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee the re uh, thee rest from all thine enemies, from all thine enemies round about, in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. 
Doesn't sound like God likes Amalek, does it? Oh, but Jesus came to die on the cross for all our sins, and he's going to love everybody. I don't think so. All right. Isaiah 63, verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Now, remember, Edom is Esau, and, you know, God doesn't love. God said he hated him. Who is this that cometh from Esau with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. You know, red. What's the color of communism? Red. Look at the red China's flag. What color is it? I'm going to give you three guesses. Red, red, red. Communism in Russia. What was the color of their flag? Red. Uh, Revelation 12 and verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Huh. Who is the dragon? Bible interpret the Bible. That's what we need to do every time. You know, you should always let the Bible interpret the Bible. But it doesn't work with the modern Bible versions. It doesn't work. It only works with the King James Bible. So, Revelation, uh, let's go to Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. Let's skip to verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Ah, so the devil and Satan are the great dragon, that, that great red dragon, huh? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Ah, bingo. And I was right. Romans 9.13 As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Let's go to Malachi chapter 1. I want to drive this home. I want people to know God hates Esau in the past. He hates him now and he's going to hate him in the future. Esau was a spiritually bad dude he hated the things of god and he threw away his seed line i mean knowing what he was doing that's the thing malachi chapter 1 1 the burden of the word of the lord to israel by malachi i have loved you saith the lord yet ye say yet ye say how to get some water there so verse 2 I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And what's heritage? The Bible says your heritage is... Uh, children are a man's heritage. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. God gave, God hated Esau and laid his property and his children as waste for the dragons of the wilderness. But God loves everybody. I don't think so. Does that make sense now? Isaiah 63, verse 1. 
Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, that I speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red? Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Now, Josephus was a Jewish historian that lived, was a contemporary of Christ. And per him, King Herod, you know, that wonderful king that tried to kill all the, uh, that killed all the boys under a certain age in Bethlehem, trying to kill Christ. Yeah, that wonderful guy. I'm being very sarcastic. Um, according to Josephus, the Jewish historian, Herod was of Esau Edom. So think about that. When Christ, when uh, Pilate sent Jesus to Herod, Herod started talking to Jesus, and Jesus didn't even answer him a word. Not one word. I guess when uh, Jesus said, uh, not to cast your pearls before swine. He wasn't going to do it. Verse 3, Isaiah 63, 3. I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people that, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. What is raiment? Clothes. For the day of vengeance is my in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. All right, speaking of wine presses, uh, Revelation 14, 19 and 20. Revelation 14. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. And the wine press was trodden without the city, and blood and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridle, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Revelation 19.15, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So Isaiah 63, 3, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that, there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. And I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord, and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us, and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed on them, according to his mercies, and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. For he said, Surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their Savior. In all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people, saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him, that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name that led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble. 
As a beast goeth down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. So didst thou, so didst thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength, the sounding of thy bowels and of thy mercies toward me? Are they restrained? Doubtless thou art our father. Though Abraham, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not, thou, O Lord, art our father, our redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. O Lord, hast thou made us to err from thy ways, and hardened our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servants' sake, the tribes of thine inheritance. The people of my holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by thy name. Well, that's the end of this chapter. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In the name of Jesus, amen.